Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. How are you are today? Okay, so uh, hmm. notice that they always like to sit behind. Uh. Yeah. So, yeah. Either the front row or the aisle. Like I got laser eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let me count. Uh. One, two, three, four, five. Next time I have five or four rows. Yeah. Six, seven, remove them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's. Except for this lady here. Tell us your name. Hi. Yes, hello. Hi. Good to see you again. Uh, yeah, tell, tell, them, tell them your name. My name is Malay and I'm from Singapore. Yes, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Why don't you sit forward a bit more? Don't sit alone there. Yeah, come forward. Yeah, so Malay, Malay right? Yeah. yeah. So she uh, was at SIM, right? The top? Oh, SMU. SMU. SMU, yes. So about maybe two, one or two weeks back, two weeks ago. Yeah. So there was a, a talk for the Buddhist Society at uh, SMU. Some of you are from SMU. Yeah. Uh, it was actually quite touching for me to be there that day. Uh, because each time I go to SMU, I see um, the seniors there. Um, and that day, the, the, the alumni, the senior, uh, while sending me back, shared with me about uh, the ongoings. So because I asked, like, wow, this is very nice, you know, to see the alumni uh, attending the talks. Um, for me, even when I was a lay person, I didn't go back to listen to talks because it's really quite out of the way <laughs> to go all the way back to NTU, uh, Jalambaha, where I don't know, I don't know who will go all the way back there. Huh? Why is my mom calling me at this time? <laughs> Can I answer? Yes. Oh, she called. She put down the phone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, if she calls back again, then I will put her on speaker, okay? <laughs> <laughs> then we all can have a chat with her. So anyway, yeah, I thought it was really heartwarming to see all the alumni uh, attend. And it turned out that they, are, they were not attending. Uh, they were not just attending, they were organizing. And then the, the, uh, the volunteer who was sending me back then he shared with me that actually um, they are organizing as well. They are not just attending, but they are organizing it. And the reason being, um, in the past few years, they were having difficulties getting the juniors to step forward to volunteer as committee members. Yeah, and so uh, the alumni uh, dive right in and just took over the helm and run the society for them. Uh, I thought that was really something, yeah. Uh, so it was very touching for me that day, yeah. Because uh, the past few years I gave a couple of talks, but it didn't occur to me. So that day they shared with me, uh, and that day Ali was there, and then uh, there was uh, there was another guy, Nicholas. A couple of them who were new, yeah. So good to see you here. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the SGC. Did you come in when we were doing chanting or after? Uh, Towards the end? When you were chanting. Ah, okay. So uh, we usually have short chanting. Uh, not usually all the time. We have short chanting. Yeah. Short relative to most temples. Then we have short sitting. And then we have some Dhamma talk. Yeah. So today is the first uh, session. With the new timing, we start. We 
we used to, a couple of years back, start at 2 o'clock. Then we shifted to 1 p.m. And starting today, we shift it to 1.30. Yeah. Uh, I think it's easier for everybody, including myself, because uh, 1 o'clock is really tight. Yeah. I have to like really finish lunch and then just chunk down here. Yeah. Uh, who else is new here today on my right? Let me see. Um, uh, I think all season parking, huh? Yeah. Uh, some of you come back to renew once a year. <laughs> uh, Claire, Claire, Claire have to reintroduce herself again. Yeah. Tell us your name, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> So from following the class until follow you Facebook to follow YouTube. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so it's uh, it's like re uh, reunion, uh, Chinese New Year period. Uh, yeah. But on and off, yeah, there'll be students who uh, come back. Uh, but this is this is this is uh, this is good. Um, I used to tell people. My aim is, uh, you know, if you go to the cinema, they want you to come back. They hope that you will keep coming back. You go to the shopping mall, they hope that you come. You go there every day. Mm -hmm. You go to McDonald's, they hope you just stay there. You know. Uh, but for. Buddhist temples, rightly speaking, we hope that people come to learn Dhamma and eventually they don't need to come again. Yeah. Uh, why? Because uh, we come to learn Dhamma uh, to, be, to become better, yeah? to change ourselves, to overcome our, the challenges in our life, to overcome our defilements. And then eventually, uh, in Buddhism, the aim is for everyone to become independent. Yeah. Independent so that you can, you're able to face your challenges on your own and perhaps even be able to help others do that. Yeah. So, rightly speaking, uh, one day, <coughs> then finally, until left chopping here, then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then I say, okay, good, I have done my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then by then, you all should be starting your own group cultivation. <laughs> yeah, with your head also like that. <laughs> mm. So, uh, today's topic, how is today's topic? Uh, the Buddha's teaching is it, on the way to a prosperous life. Is it? New year. new year, prosperous new year. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who have been attending my talks, uh, you know that I seldom talk about prosperity. Uh. <laughs> seldom talk about what? Uh. <coughs> but I thought Chinese New Year. Uh. So I have to blend in with the occasion a bit. Yeah. But. Uh, Do you all feel prosperous? Huh? Well, <laughs> nobody feel prosperous. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> they are very prosperous in the stomach. Did you join, uh, Ali? Do you join any of your Singapore friends in the Chinese New Year celebration? I went for like dinner with Singaporeans. Uh huh. Did you eat the low hay? the Chinese salad, and then they, like that, like that. Uh, and you shout, what la? <laughs> Do you know what it means, what? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, so it, the, the beauty and the, the bane of 
Chinese language is every character has multiple meaning and the way we use it sometimes goes beyond those meaning as well so the word fa in Hokkien is huat and uh, it has many meaning but it basically means to give rise to or to evoke uh, in the Chinese New Year, during Chinese New Year, people say that to mean to uh, yeah, that means to become prosperous. Mm. So uh, some years back, during the, the uh, Chinese New Year celebration in the monastery, we would have the steamboat, we would have the yu shen, you know, and then yeah, I was thinking to myself, that's quite circular. Huh? That's very mundane. Huh? What, what, what? In the temple, some more. So I, I told them, Fa, Fa Puti Sing. Yeah. So to give rise, not to simply just, just thinking about prosperity, but to give rise to bodhicitta, mm. the mind, the aspiration to strive towards enlightenment. Yeah. Uh, but today we still have to talk about prosperity huh? uh, today's topic um, how many of you just now I asked you how many of you feel prosperous I was writing my lenses uh, but don't seem to have any response huh? yeah so you don't feel prosperous huh? yeah really don't feel there's no response <laughs> huh? really uh? so so really uh? uh, not quite there yet, uh. like just one or two million not prosperous <laughs> enough. <laughs> when we think, talk about prosperity, we tend to talk about material wealth. Yeah? Uh, so sometimes when we learn Buddhism, we, we may also think that material wealth is secondary and uh, place in the Buddhist teaching. Yeah? But if we look at the Buddha's teaching, uh, while the ultimate goal is uh, enlightenment, yeah, nibbana, to be free of suffering, yeah, free of the causes of suffering, and as a result, free of suffering, um, the Buddha also taught individuals how to acquire wealth, how to maintain their wealth, uh, and how to sow the seeds for future wealth as well. Yeah. So there's this part of the teachings. Mm. Um, so today I want to share with you something which some of you may be familiar with. It is called the Eight Fields of Merit. Yeah, the Eight Fields of Merit. Uh, what are the Eight Fields of Merit? First of all, what is considered Fields of Merit? And where did this term come from? So in, uh, in ancient India, and to a large extent even today in India yeah, uh, the society was mainly agrarian yeah, so uh, agrarian meaning that the society subsists based on agriculture yeah. so uh, India last time was mainly agrarian uh, to a large extent uh, Southeast Asian countries have moved from ag agrarian to uh, some other industries, yeah, but uh, a huge part of Southeast Asia, yeah, a lot of the places still have swaths of plantations, uh, paddy field, yeah. Myanmar, for example, yeah, produce a lot of rice, Thailand as well. Uh, India used to uh, do that. Yeah. So uh, the term Fu Tian, yeah, fields of merit, came from that background. So the Buddha described how uh, he would describe the, the Sangha, uh, the assembly of monks and nuns, as fields of merit. Mm. And the context is, he described how when a person were to do uh, offering or to give, then um, depending on the, the, the source, yeah, that means the giver, and also depending on the recipient, then the results may vary. Yeah. So since our end, the giver, is uh, 
is already who we are, then depending on who we give, then it may vary. Then the Buddha described how uh, different individuals or different groups of individuals um, can give varying results. And it is just like with the same seed, if you plant into different kind of soil, then different uh, fruits may, um, may, may come forth. Some soil is very fertile, so you plant the seed, you give it adequate uh, uh, water, yeah, irrigation and so on, then very quickly it will sprout and uh, the plant will be strong, the seeds, the grain or the fruits yeah, will be bountiful. But there are some uh, land which is dry and arid, yeah, which is hard, uh, not suitable for planting. And if you are to try to plant and work on the f on a field, uh, it will take a lot of effort and the plant that sprout is not very strong. And the fruits that um, come about is not so plentiful as well. Yeah, so using the real life field, the Buddha used that as an analogy to describe the Sangha yeah, or to describe the recipients. So in the case of the Sangha, then the Buddha described them to be bountiful. Yeah? Uh, and in contrast, in real life, when you plant a seed, you get the physical fruit. And whereas for when you give to different individuals, then you sow merits. And so the Buddha described the Sangha as fields of merits. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, as, as I've shared before, this is the basis for our ropes, the design of our ropes, where you will see the pedifield design, yeah, and that's why our ropes is also called the Fu Tian Yi, yeah, the 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 rope which has the design of the pedifield, yeah. Um, but Sangha, uh, being the field of merit, is only but one of them. Yeah, in total, the Buddha described eight different types. Yeah. So the first one, uh, the first one that we commonly highlight is Buddha. Yeah. The Buddha is the first view of merit. And then the second will be the enlightened, uh, enlightened uh, disciples. Uh, the third will be the preceptor. I will go through and explain later. Huh? And the fourth would be the uh, mentor, yeah, those who uh, guide you directly in the, in the teachings. And the fifth is the Maha Sangha. Huh? So the first five, then the next two, mother and father. Yeah, or if you look at the text, it leaves out father than mother. But the two are basically your parents. Lah. And so that makes seven. Number eight will be those who are uh, physically sick. Mm. So together, that's eight fields of merit. Mm. The, uh, if you consider the first five, then together it encompasses what we call the, uh, the triple gem, yeah, in a way. So we have Buddha, yeah, the Buddha, uh, the Buddha is a field of merit yeah, because the Buddha is a very unique individual. Yeah. Uh, but for us, the Buddha, uh, unfortunately, uh, Chinese New Year, did you all uh, pay respect to the Buddha? Did you all manage to do, have low hair with Buddha? <laughs> no. Uh. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Anyone uh, invite Buddha for lunch <laughs> these few weeks? No, huh? Yeah. So in the Buddhist tradition, we say that uh, beings of our era, yeah, that means after the Buddha has passed away, then there are those of us who have enough um, affinity with the Buddha to be in touch with the Buddha Dhamma and be able to accept and understand the Buddha Dhamma, but don't have enough merit to personally meet the Buddha. There's also uh, such a saying that maybe some of us, how do we have this affinity? 
Uh, maybe when the Buddha was around, maybe we was we went an ant crawling around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> then the Buddha walked past us, the shadow shielded us and oh quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, uh so for us we in a way we don't have direct contact with the Buddha. Not in this life past life. But then next would be enlightened ones. Mm. So enlightened ones include those who are Sangha and lay. Yeah. Uh, key thing is they are enlightened. Yeah. So if you if you uh, do offering or to give, when we say offering, actually, um, let's say you are in the bus and you stand up for someone. Uh, do you say you are doing an offering? Usually we don't say that. Uh, but actually you, you did offer your seed, isn't it? So in a way it's an offering of, your, of the seed. Yeah. Uh, but usually in the Buddhist tradition, depending on whether it's given with uh, reverence or given out of compassion, then we use slightly different name. Uh. Yeah. So if it's given with compassion, then we say it's a form of giving. Then when it's to someone that you respect, then you say it's offering. Actually, same thing. Uh. Yeah, in a way, it's the same thing. In some uh, community, then they say that even when you are doing charity, you should do with reverence also. Yeah, uh, with the mindset, uh, you offer, then this person is a future Buddha. Yeah, so different mindset can change the quality of your giving also. Uh, so, but here the second category are those who are enlightened. Yeah. So similar to the first category, the Buddha, the distinction is that uh, Buddha, while also an enlightened one, is very unique because a Buddha is someone who is, in a way, self-enlightened. Yeah. And not just self-enlightened, but is able to bring forth the Dharma, yeah. to expound the, uh, t- the teachings, and from there, establish a Sangha and allow this teaching to uh, continue for some time. For the, sang- for the enlightened one, mm, then uh, it's of much merit also, yeah, because on the receiving end is completely pure. Yeah. Uh, and to give to such a person, then the merits is quite, it has been described in many ways. Uh. The third category, uh, the Acharya, her sang, uh, no, not Charya, but the uh, Upadaya, the her sang, which is the preceptor. Mm. So this is as a as a form of gratitude mm. that this person uh, has direct um, kindness to us. Yeah, the person who actually administer the precepts to us. And usually it's the one who teach the precepts to us also. Yeah. Without which then we wouldn't have come across the, the practices. Mm. So out of uh, gratitude yeah, and out of the kindness of that person, when we uh, do support or giving to such a person, yeah, it's much merit. The next would be the Acharya, yeah, which is the mentor. So the first category is also a teacher. Yeah, or rather the third category is a teacher yeah. fourth category is also a teacher the difference is that the f- third category is the one who administer the precepts yeah, transmit the precepts, the unbroken lineage to us the fourth are those who are like our personal teacher yeah, so will guide us and teach us uh, and be more involved in your daily uh, practices mm. so out of gra- again, out of gratitude yeah, for the kindness and depth that the person has rendered to us. So that is the upadaya, acharya, and the fifth would be the mahasanga. Yeah, so the assembly of monks and nuns, and this is not simply just to our teacher, but all sangha. Yeah. So um, in the um, if you look at the Nikayas, you find something interesting. 
in many places, the Buddha don't simply highlight that uh, giving to uh, Buddhist monks or nuns. Yeah. But he actually described uh, supporting and giving to uh, the Brahmins and the uh, ascetics. Yeah. The important thing is whether they are Brahmins or ascetics, that they practice the non-killing, non-stealing, non-sexual misconduct, uh, non, uh, the non-lying. Yeah. They practice kindness, they practice harmlessness, they, they practice the removal of evil and doing of good. Yeah. So it's not so much whether a person is in um, following a certain school of thought or not, yeah, or, or wear a certain clothing, but whether this person is cultivating. Uh, as long as this person is cultivating, then fall into that category. So, beyond the first five, then we have the next two, which is closer to us. The first category, Buddha, uh, close but not so close. Uh. <laughs> How to find Buddha now? Can find not? <laughs> In some traditions, it says that if you are able to meditate and practice, and if you can do contemplation and see the truth, Ah, then you see the Buddha everywhere. Mm. Yeah. But that's, that's, that is seeing the Buddha in a very special way. It's seeing the principle of his teaching. Yeah. And if you reach that stage, wow, then uh, you don't have to worry about merit. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So second category, uh, is it easy to find an enlightened one. Sometimes students, these days lesser students ask me this question. Last time a lot of students asked me, Sufu, how, uh, how do we know whether someone is enlightened? Yeah. Where can we find someone who is enlightened? Yeah. So, um, is it important to find someone who is enlightened? Mm. If, if you happen to encounter someone who is enlightened and there is the Dharma affinity, then yes, that person can give you some good advice and teachings. Uh, but good advice and teachings is only as good as uh, we are willing to take it as well. Uh, time and again, sometimes, uh, sometimes in the train station, sometimes that day in the in the cab, there was this uh, the grab driver, Indian chap, not chap. Uh, he's I think older than me. Cannot call him chap, but not so old to call him uncle. Uh, Indian man. So he, he asked me how I am, and then uh, he commented that it's um, wonderful to see that I become a monk. And then he went on quite a bit about, um, you know, the what he think of as um, the virtue of, you know, this practice and so on and so forth. Mm. Uh, we can take it as just small talk, huh? yeah. Uh, but for me, it was uh, it was most interesting, yeah, to hear someone. Uh, he's not even a Buddhist, yeah, but he was sharing about, like almost throughout the whole journey, you know, he kind of saying, oh, it's so wonderful. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So if we are, if we are um, receptive, then even s just some, something in a way casual said by the Grab driver yeah, can be Dharma. So don't wait. Uh, instead of waiting to look for uh, an enlightened teacher, keep your ears enlightened. Uh. Yeah, then you can get a lot of Dharma everywhere. Uh, but in the meantime, then we have the next few category, the, the preceptor and the uh, mentor. By right, your, your preceptor and mentor 
is someone that you should be quite uh, in close contact with then you can learn from them but in Singapore we are all quite busy uh. so yeah once a year visit the teacher is quite good uh. <laughs> but fortunately for some of you are quite frequent also yeah so uh, not so bad but um, in Singapore the next category is harder Sangha yeah in Thailand, in Myanmar, anywhere you, you just turn your head, you see a monk. See a monk. Everywhere you see monks. Uh, yeah. In the morning, you see monks everywhere. So, in countries like Myanmar, in Thailand, in I think Cambodia as well, Sri Lanka, uh, not difficult to see a monk. But in Singapore, uh, usually you don't see monks outside. Yeah. All of us hide somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> We don't usually go out. <laughs> yeah, when nothing to do, we don't go out. We're just, we're just happy to stay in the, where we are. Yeah. So if you happen to bump into a monk, like in a bookshop, yeah, uh, in a veggie, veggie place, ah, you must quickly like, cut queue, cut queue. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you have the opportunity and you happen to see some monks or nuns, um, at the food court or somewhere, yeah, then just take the opportunity to, you know, uh, do offering of the meal. You don't have to wait until once a year, then go to this place, do sangha offering, offer meal. Yeah, sometimes, eh, the, you know, sometimes you have to wonder, you may, throughout the whole year, you may, you may be praying to Buddha, ah, please let me have a chance to go and do sangha offering, please, please, please. Then, Finally, on that big day, wow, maybe you fall sick. Maybe you are busy with something else. Then you didn't go. Wow, then you pray to Buddha. Wow, oh, Buddha, don't help me. Wow, don't. Yeah. But every, every, maybe once a week, every time you go to food court, you get the monk walk past, then you can sit down there, then you see, then you also never offer. <laughs> yeah. Don't have to wait for a ceremony. Yeah. Anytime you see a monk out, uh, yeah, it, actually in Singapore it's very hard to bump into a monk. And s furthermore, usually if you see the monk outside having a meal, many times it's a, sang it's a meal offering. So you, you want to offer also hard. Mm, not so easy. And these days it's very easy. If you know of some monks, if they, are, if they need lunch, so simple, just take out a handful, food delivery, the, the, <laughs> uh, uh, food panda, something. Yeah, so some students do that. Yeah. So, after Sangha, ah, this category, these two categories is most close to us. Father and mother. Yeah. And to, uh, today, I, my f main focus I want to highlight is actually this. Mm. This morning, I highlighted in uh, Buddhist fellowship also. The topic is on gratitude. So you think about it. Those of us who still have the fortune, the merit of staying with our parents, yeah, or maybe our in-laws. Of course, sometimes when we say in-laws, then yeah, sometimes we may not feel that it's a merit. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we may feel like it's a punishment. <laughs> yeah, but in any case, uh, if you can, then uh, do offering to your parents. Yeah. As simple as pouring them a cup of water every day. Yeah. It doesn't have to be something elaborate. Just pour a cup of water. Yeah. Uh, and don't take it as a chore, as a duty. You know, every day, then you set a timer, then six, like 7 a.m., then you, then you, after you, your mom wake up, then you say, Ah, ma, the water is there. You go and help yourself. Ah. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah and pour your own hands. Uh, don't ask your mate to go and do it. Uh. Yeah. Don't ask the whole world to do it, but don't do it yourself. Uh, pour yourself and then uh, wait for your parents to be ready, get them seated down, then uh, offer to them. Yeah. But of course, initially, if you have not been doing it all this while, suddenly you do it, then it may become suspicious. Uh. <laughs> Why is my son suddenly so nice to me? <laughs> No, I don't think they will think that way, right? They'll be quite happy. Yeah. Uh, if, let's say, you are not staying together, 
then at least maybe once a week or once every two weeks, yeah, find a, find a time to have lunch with them, yeah, uh, or in the in your case, you can have dinner with them. Uh, but on the other hand, I must also highlight for those of us who are someone's parents, and if your children is coming of age, you know, patoing or having family, you know, new family already, then as father and mother. We should learn to be gracious and make it easy for people to support us. Make it easy for people to care for us. Yeah. Uh, so, I uh, recently I sat down with some devotees and then they shared with me how um, the, this couple, very devoted Buddhists, they are volunteer in the monastery and so on and so forth, the two daughters also, you know, very pious. But then the the old mother, uh, the moment they meet, the mother would would just spend all the time or most of the time talking to the children, talking to the wife or the son, talk, talking about what? Asking them about the news of the other siblings. <laughs> ah. So, so in I'm the mother, okay, or father, la, for that matter. Then this fam this this son and the wife and the children. So when we meet, instead of talking to them about them, asking how they are, ask them, hey, you know your auntie, how ah, uh, how are they now ah? Uh? Uh. Then talk. Uh, do you know your niece or net, uh, your your cousin? How are they? Yeah. All the conversation is about everybody else except them. Ah. So after a while, the you know the son, this the son and the mother ma, but the f whole family feel like, what for we go and spend time? The, the grandmother is not interested in us. <laughs> mm. uh, have you encountered? Sometimes we encounter. Uh, sometimes we are on the receiving end. But I have to be careful. Huh? Sometimes unconsciously we are actually doing it. Mm. We are sometimes unconsciously doing it. So wh whoever you are with, with, regardless of your relation, talk to them about them. Ask about them. Yeah. Don't ask people about other people. <laughs> yeah. Because it, after, after a while it becomes a habit. And to the other person it feels like once a month I meet you, then all you talk to me about is somebody else. <laughs> Bang. Yeah. And make it easy for others also. Mm. Uh, don't be like Sifu. Ah. When Sifu was a kid, I'm quite difficult sometimes. At certain age, I'm very easy going. Certain age, wow, very, very mafan, you know. When I was a, a kid, uh, my uncle and auntie and my mom sometimes bring me out. And then when we go to town and it's time for lunch, then they'll ask me, what do you want to eat? And you know what I tell them? Pao yeah. Pao is the bun. And Tao uh, Hui is soya milk. Of course, nowadays you can find soya milk anywhere. Jollibean is all over the island, right? Yeah. And nowadays, a lot of food court also have pao. But last time, no, no. Especially shopping center. Shopping center, no pao. Only small coffee shop then have pao. Uh, and the older types. The newer types, last time, no pao. Uh, but I would insist, no. And it's not like I insist on some exotic special food. I, ins I insist on just having the pao. Yeah. Cheap food, but difficult to find. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes elderly can also do some funny things like that. They keep on thinking, oh, I don't want to mafan my family, yeah, get something simple and cheap. But then when you are out in a town, not out in town, in a restaurant, then you want simple and cheap. <laughs> You're making life difficult for people. Yeah. So on one hand, uh, we want to express our gratitude towards our parents, yeah, to care for them, to provide for them. Uh, we should also consider if we are on the receiving end, yeah, if we are the elders, 
if we are the in-laws or parents, we should also try to make it easy for them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but again, uh, don't follow Sifu. Sometimes Sifu don't make it easy for people. Yeah. Offer, don't offer so much. <laughs> yeah, what, you know why? Uh? Because my fish, uh, <laughs> sometimes cannot close. So <laughs> Just before Chinese New Year, they, they, the volunteers came to help to do spring cleaning, then clear out the rice dumpling. <laughs> yeah, it from the freezer, from the freezer, yeah. So after it's cleared, now, uh, uh, now it's full again. <laughs> yeah. Now all the compartments are filled. I have one and a half quela piece. No, the quela piece, the big, the whole big one, uh, one set, and then another one half. So yesterday when some of them, and then yesterday when I saw them do the birthday cake, quela piece again. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, tell me, I have two quail apis. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, actually, not that Sufu is picky, la, but you know, when there's yeah, some, some, some of you cannot before. Yeah, very, wow, so excited. Wow, have a chance to go to class, then want to offer Sufu. Then Sufu give you the look, the cold stare. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Yeah, why? Because I have limitation. Yeah, if if let's say there are twenty people staying together, no problem. You, whatever you put in, boom, huh? a few days gone. But satu orang, <laughs> and then I usually don't take dinner. Then how 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 how? <laughs> for those of you who know me for past from ten years ago, you know how much how much I put on already. <laughs> Cannot. <laughs> <laughs> cannot, cannot. Yeah. So bopian. Yeah. So so this eight uh the last one for the eight fields of merit, number seven. To the sick. Mm, those who are sick. Regardless of yeah, to provide for the sick, yeah, uh, that is of much merit. And then in some other commentaries, it says to anyone who is in need, yeah, and when you provide for them, uh, that is much merit. Yeah, so not just to the sick, to the poor, those who are in need of help. Yeah, because by providing for them in this way, you are removing their fear. Mm, removing their fear. So, uh, if you want to be prosperous, rushing, uh, I, I don't think any of you do that. Huh? In Singapore, some, some temples, they have this practice of, you know, the, the first jaw stick, the first jaw stick, yeah, the first jaw, whatever. Wow, you see, you see the way they rush in. It is just like US Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Ayo. You think about it, when they are doing this, they are going, the, what is the mindset inside? Craving, desire, selfishness, yeah? And because if you are fighting to get the first one, that means you are being selfish. Uh. You are not ready to let people have the good fortune. Uh. Yeah? Then if you are having such a mindset, how can you have fortune? Yeah, doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, so for Buddhists, we should uh, do it differently. Yeah. Everybody sit down there and then, you, you go first, you go first. <laughs> yeah, until 2 a.m. still haven't planted the incense. Yeah. You, no, no, you go first. I, I help you put the kangkang, okay, you go. You, no, 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 you, you, you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you truly want to have prosperity, yeah, there, are, there are many dif the different avenues yeah, to do offering and not necessarily just during Chinese New Year. Mm. Uh, like 
offering to our parents. You don't have to wait until Chinese New Year. Yeah. Uh, reunion din dinner makes sense uh, for many countries, especially China, because the, they stay apart. Yeah. Then once a year, they go back to their hometown to meet all their relatives and friends. Then there's really some significance. Singapore, uh, uh, a bit. <laughs> yeah. Singapore, you don't have to wait for a reunion dinner. Yeah. Every, every week, we can have reunion dinner. Yeah. But sometimes, human beings are very strange. When I was working in Suntec last time, I bumped into uh, an old schoolmate. Two, eh, one, one of them. I was in uh, Tower A, uh, and then he was in don't know, Tower 5 or something. So he was with UBS. And then, in the end, in that two, two, three years I was there, we only met maybe once or twice. <laughs> so that's a problem, you know. Sometimes when we feel that we are, it's easy to meet, uh, then we don't take the opportunity to meet. Yeah. Uh, so practice giving, starting at home. How many of you stay with your parents? Oh, wonderful. Ah, so this is your exercise. Every day, offer them water. Then, after three months, all your parents text me, Sufu gao liao I'm having water retention. <laughs> Enough water. Kopi also can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't limit yourself to water. Uh, when you, uh, you, you make them tea, buy them coffee or tea, or simple meal. It yeah, doesn't have to be an elaborate, wow, go to a big restaurant, you know. To me, I don't know how parents feel, but I, if I guess, I think parents are happier, uh, are still as happy. Yeah? If you were to, to walk with them, go to their, a, very, a simple coffee shop nearby, like if, you, if let's say you are going to work, maybe they just go to the market and then just have a simple breakfast. I, I think when we are having off days or weekends, you know, I think that they are quite happy to just walk, for us to walk with them, you know, to go to the coffee shop and just sit down there and eat with them and just listen to them eat chin -ing or, -ing or here and there. Uh, it may give them a lot of joy. Yeah, and if you can do that, I think Prosperity is not far from you. Huh? Mm. But even as we do that, you must know, mm. in the larger scheme of things, this is considered uh, happiness uh, in the present life and planting the seeds for future happiness. Mm. But that's it. In the Tibetan tradition, it's considered the zhong uh, si dao, that means the practice you know, not not the inferior practice, but still not the superior one. Yeah. So, uh, good to do that as a basis. Yeah. Uh, but also keep in mind the subsequent practices. Mm. Yeah. The subsequent practices, of course, then includes the observance of the precepts, practice of concentration, and then development of wisdom. And then, if you can give your parents uh, worldly gifts, that's good. But if you can help them to develop uh, these three, sila, pan, samadhi, and panya, oh, then even better. Uh, to share with them the Dharma. Uh, but if you want to share with them Dharma, uh, some of you have tried. Not so easy, huh? Uh, why? Because you never share with them kopi, guni, cha, ruti. <laughs> yeah, you haven't shared with them the time yet. Uh, you need to do the background work first. Yeah, if you, every, you know, every weekend you sit down with them, have breakfast, chit chat with them, hear them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then when, when, it's, when it has reached a critical point, when you want to talk to them, they will listen. Uh, then they will listen. If you don't spend time with them, listening to them, wah, 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 then you, 
the, the moment like whole month you don't see them the moment you see them ma don't eat this one this one is not good for you be a vegetarian <laughs> <laughs> very difficult yeah uh, three months don't meet the first time you, the only time you meet yeah, immediately yeah, you tell them ma come come and do prayers uh, come come and do the class don't go karaoke. Uh, so sometimes if you, if you really want to help them, you both can have to go karaoke with them. No? Ah, really, I'm, I'm serious. In the Buddhist town teaching, yeah, 同事, recently I shared with some students, 同事, that means to, um, uh, 同, 同样的同, 事情的事, yeah. So, uh, to do do things as they do. Mm. Like if you them. yes, to accommodate them, as long as the activity is not in violation of the local law, and not in violation of the of the morality, uh, then you should accommodate with them to spend time so that you build up that rapport and trust. Uh, the difference is. It's just like if your nieces and nephew come to to visit you, do you tell them come sit down, uh, come I I read to you Dharma book. <laughs> <laughs> then I think your niece and nephew next time, huh? <laughs> that ee e, do one do one. <laughs> uh, but if they come and then you say, wow, what story book are you reading? Come I read. Oh, then they all. Oh, next time your 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 sister say ask them come we go there. Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, without them, them, them parents asking, they will say, where are we going to that E's place or that uncle's place? Uh, we will spend time with them, right? So same thing, ma. When you uh, with your nieces and nephew, you have to, you know, Ayah, read that storybook, lah. You know, and then if they are even younger, have to talk like baby, like, ah, the boo 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 boo. But the, so the same for our parents, uh. Parents, unfortunately, because when we grow up, we have the perception they are they are more knowledgeable, ma. So we have that kind of expectation that they should be like this, like this, like this, and this. Yeah, but as a result, we forget to um, accommodate them. Mm. Then from that angle, they feel like we are on a moral high horse. Oh, wow. come here, kiko, kiko, kiko. Huh? Very smart. <laughs> then of course they'll say, don't know. Don't know. Ah, you you very smart, lah. <laughs> yeah. oh. Okay. Yes, just nice. Any questions? Okay. Pop quiz time. What is the third feel of merit? Raise your hand. Yes. Preceptor, good. Give her a round of applause. Okay. What is the uh, fifth field of merit? Yes. Mahasanga. Mahasanga. Good. <coughs> uh, what is the... This one easy one. Uh. This one is easy one. Uh. The first field of merit. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Raise your uh. Yes. Is it correct? Yes. Okay, another one, another easy one, easy one. Uh, what is the number eight field of merit? <laughs> what, what is the? Uh, what is it? Number eight? Yes? Yes, very good. Uh, then uh, number two? Number two? Huh? Yes, very good. Uh, number four? She cannot answer already. Uh, let other people have a chance for the clap. <laughs> number four? What, 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 what is number four? Uh, count, re recap. Yes. Huh? Mentor. Mentor, yes, very good. And number three. 
Alma number three. I'll check handphone now. Or oh, check notes. What is what what is the number four? Hmm? Huh? No, no, those who have said hmm. what who is number four? Number four? And all looking, where's number four? Huh? Who is that? <laughs> number four? One, two, three, four. Mentor. mentor. Yeah. yeah. Eh, just now, did anyone say mentor? Yeah. Ah. Oh, number three? Ah, number three is preceptor. Yeah. So left with last two. Yeah. Last two, number six, and number seven. Why is number six and seven? Oh, you all uh, can, cannot remember. Huh? Can. Number six is father. Number seven is mother. Yes. Uh, so remember this eight. So at least after this class, you know what is the eight fields of merit. Hey, Hing Sui Sui, Sandy, you are in the MRT, then you are just just sitting down there, fatai. Then suddenly someone come over. Hey, you Buddhist? Huh? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, huh? <laughs> Then person, what is the eight fields of merit? <laughs> uh, then you say, oh, come, I tell you. Uh, or maybe not asking you. Then two person down there sitting in the train, then, hey, what is the eight fields of merit? Uh? Well, then the other person get kyang. Wow, say all kinds of nonsense. Then you can say, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I tell you. Uh, eight fields of merit. Okay? So I hope that uh, you keep this in mind. Yeah? Uh, but not just as a knowledge, uh, but use it in our life to practice for as we reflect on these eight fields of merit then um, in our mind uh, love, compassion, gratitude yeah, and compassion uh, these qualities will arise yeah? and then with this mind, mindset then we do offering yeah? and with that put our palms together Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao Yen